Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Luke Evans and I'll be walking you through different concepts. I'm going to change the direction of my channel starting today. I had been focusing on teaching business concepts to individuals who didn't want to read a textbook, trying to explain different concepts like a SWOT analysis or Maslow's hierarchy of need to people who can use the schools and speak it in layman's terms so that they don't have to read a textbook or take a class but still use their intellect and understand concepts that would be beneficial to them. However, I'm going to be changing and adding to that concept. Specifically, I'm going to be adding a lot of my philosophical views, which will get into primarily ethical and moral structures, which will then lead into the political view of capitalism and how that applies to the business world and economics and everything else that I talk to. So I'm going to be building upon the videos that I've already done, and I'm still going to be talking about those concepts, but I will be getting into more broader concepts as well, because you can't discuss how to manage a business without discussing the environment that you're managing that business in. Having that said, the first thing that I want to get into is explaining the philosophical view that I have mostly bought into. I'm not entirely bought into this. I do still have a couple of disagreements but because it's so different from every other philosophical view, I find it very relevant to start there. So the view that I, be, I want to begin with is called objectivism, and it is the philosophy created by Ayn Rand. Ayn Rand is the famous author who wrote Atlas Shrugged, The Fountainhead, and then she went on a few other fiction novels, and she went on to write several books that, about philosophy. She created an entire philosophy for her books so that she would have um, a, a better philosophy that suited her and her desires to feed into her narrative and her storyteller st storytelling. So without further ado, I want to explain her concept and I'll try to explain a few things about where I disagree with, but most likely I'll be getting into those disagreements in future videos and as they become relevant, especially if you add comments to my video and I'm not going to sell you on subscribing and hitting the bell. I don't care. Find a video you like, and if you like the videos, watch them. That's all I care about. I hope they help you. But her view is called objectivism, and the reason for that is when you look at the very basic uh, belief of the world, it's called the metaphysics of the world. Does the world actually exist? She believes it does. In fact, she believes it, uh, it exists objectively without any other influence. Now, this seems like a very simple concept. Obviously, the world exists. seems very straightforward. However, it's called objectivism because she created the only philosophy that fully believes the world objectively exists. It doesn't exist differently because a god created it. It doesn't exist differently because we've created it in our minds. Everything else becomes kind of a moot point from then on because it simply exists. It is what it is. Now, she makes no claim to the Big Bang Theory. She makes no claim to any specific way of how we got here, simply that we are here. So it is called the objectivist theory because on a metaphysical level, she believes that the world objectively exists. And on this part, I believe with her. I believe the world exists. And this, you could say this is a belief. This is a area where I don't have complete proof because I don't have proof that it doesn't exist in a different way. And that takes to the second part, the epistemology. The epistemology is the study of how we know anything, how we know the world exists, how we know we exist, yada yada. Uh, she believes, and I believe, that we have the rational capabilities, we have our frontal lobe, and we have the physical capability of interpreting the world in a way and then we have the rational capability of making sense of that world. Now, we acknowledge, or I acknowledge, that there are things that we do not have the senses to understand. For example, our eyes cannot see infrared naturally. We cannot hear outside of a certain range of, of noises. So even though there are things that exist outside of our perception, it still exists. And the way we come to that conclusion is using her definition of logic, which is you lay out all of the aspects of whatever you're looking at, whatever you're trying to logic out. You lay out every factor in a way that there are no contradictions. And that's a key point. Contradictions, see if I can get the phrase right, due to the nature of existence, contradictions cannot exist. Right? Pretty bold statement there. So 
whenever you see something that seemingly contradicts, they'll say, uh, there's no such thing as a contradiction. If you think you come across one, check your premise. You'll find that one of them is false. Um, so whenever we find something that seems difficult, like was the world created by a single entity? Was the world created 4,000 years ago or not? And we have things like carbon dating or whatever that shows that it's actually 6 billion years or whatever the number is, that's a contradiction in our mind. So we can either say that the science was wrong and we're not actually 6 billion years old, or we can say that the belief of the creation was wrong and that we were Big Bang or whatever theory you want to use. One of those things is wrong. So we agree, I'm an atheist myself, I agree that the world was 6 billion years old because the science and everything else we can observe shows that. And it's only the things that we cannot observe that dictates that it was born, that we were created 4,000 years ago. So that's the epistemology that we have the rational cap capabilities to view the world. And we've laid out the logic to say that the world does exist in this way as we perceive it. Um, and that we have the ability to perceive it using logic and using our rational capabilities. So what does that mean and why is that important? Why have I been talking about the nature of the world? Because that seems like a basic idea. That plays into our ethics. If the world exists in a certain way, then there's a certain way that we act. And we can study the human body, we can study the human mind, and we can study the so societies and the sociology and the psychology. And I will defer to Maslow's hierarchy of needs here, and I think I've yeah, I described that in another video. I'll add that in the link below. Maslow's hierarchy of needs study the human mind and what we need to reach self-actualization. What we need to do to reach that ultimate flourishing, ultimate happy, everything's going well. And it's a full tier of things um, and that you have to be in priority. So it's you have to have food and water, you have to have uh, shelter, you have to have belonging, uh, then purpose and then skill. And then you reach up to self-actualization. I'm not going to go in full detail because there's another link below. But knowing that we can view that, we can study that, and we can see that the brain works in this way and that humans flourish in this way, and then the goal of ethics, the goal of morality, which is no knowing how you should live, we would look to that. We would look to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, although Maslow came after Ayn Rand, so I'm looking to hi Maslow's hierarchy of needs and seeing how can we live to go up this. Now, the first, the first part of that is food and shelter, right? And I'm going to use this as the baseline because the ethical structure within objectivism is called egoism. I want to use rational egoism because the idea of egoism, it's a word that people freak out on. When you add rational, suddenly it makes sense. So I'm going to simplify it and say rational egoism or your rational self-interest. And by that, I mean the things that you need to do to go up that tier of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. The first thing is feeding yourself. No one has ever said that feeding yourself is unethical. They may say that feeding yourself at the expense of taking food from someone else is unethical, but I would argue then that's a semantic where stealing food from someone else is the unethical part, feeding yourself is not. So we're gonna be splitting a lot of hairs when we get into ethics as you should, it's ethics. You need to split hairs. So taking care of your rational self-interest getting the things you need to reach self-actualization. And the joy of it is that your reaching your self-actualization does not prevent anyone else from reaching their self-actualization. Even if you're in a competitive market or something where you're trying to live your best life and you're competing with someone trying to live their best life, whether you reach yours first or they reach theirs, or if you're competing and you get the resource that they don't get, they can still reach self-actualization self without that particular resource because they still have the ability to live their values and to make their choices even if someone got to it first. So it's a difference between stealing and essentially being better. Uh, I hesitate to say more fit, but being, because uh, a lot of it is just luck too, right? Having luck and taking advantage of what's given to you. And that's where we get into the politics. The study of politics is how individuals should live together. Ethics is how you live your life. Politics is how groups of individuals should live together. Usually referring to a minimum of 150 people and how you can live up, but we can even take this into two people. And that, that competition, and I'll add that trade, is the foundation of the political system, capitalism. Now I'm talking capitalism, full-fledged, free market capitalism, not cronyism, not... Um, 
not lobbying, all these things that people say, oh, the dirty capitalists because they pay the government to get this thing. Well, if you're paying a government, that's the exact opposite of capitalism. That's using socialism or sometimes communism and all those different um, central planning theories. So capitalism is full-fledged uh, free market, open market. The only role of government in capitalism, and this is one of the parts that I'm not fully in agreement with, but I'm going to explain it in Ayn Rand's view. The only view of capitalism, or sorry, the only role government plays in capitalism is to protect the physical property and the physical rights of the individuals living in that country or in that nation or whatever size group you want to say. So what does that mean? That means I have full freedom to live my best life, whatever that means, whatever that means for myself, and I can do everything within my physical power until that impedes on someone else's rights to do the exact same thing. Usually that manifests in material goods. I can see it manifesting in some other things like intellectual property. I'll cover that in another video because that's a much more sticky, but the concept is still there. I have my property. If I create something, then I can create it. I can use it. I can sell it. I can burn it. I can throw it away. Whatever I want to do, it's mine. I made it. But if someone else comes and instead of trading it, they steal it from me, that's bad. And that's where the government will come in because that person used a force, physical force, to take something from me. They physically stole it from me without my uh, express voluntary need, right? Capitalism is based on voluntary trade. So as soon as that becomes involuntary, it is no longer ethical. And the government is, in Ayn Rand's view, given a monopoly on the use of physical force. Now, the benefit is that's the only thing they do. They have a police force, because that's physical force. They have the military force, because that's also physical force. And then the judicial system, which is the coordination of that physical force. And that's the only role. So there's no, there's no tax system, which is an interesting thing that we can get into in another video if you like. There's no social justice system. Um, one interesting thing that I've heard Ben Shapiro said, as soon as you add a modifier to the word justice, you diminish it. Justice doesn't need a modifier. You don't need to add social justice. I thought that was a very eye-opening statement. So, so social justice, don't get me wrong, used to be a self-proclaimed social justice warrior. I want everyone's freedom. I, I advocate for people to have their own freedom. However, justice is the only role of the government. Uh, they want to they should protect physical rights and nothing else and then that, the last part of the theory is or the the philosophy is getting into aesthetics what makes something beautiful that's just the final part of philosophy probably not going to come up very much in my videos but essentially art is something that inspires man to reach his full capacity and there's a lot of ways that can happen and i may even be misquoting that because that's not my specialty when getting into this i'm not an artist i don't care as much about the aesthetics but I wanted to finish up with that nice round of view because those are the five parts of her philosophy. You have the metaphysics, the world objectively exists. Epistemology, we know the world exists because we have the rational capacity to interpret it. Ethics, we are rational egoists because we live in a certain way. Humans operate in a certain way. And when we live as an egoist, we will reach our full capacity. Uh, political is the capitalism, free market capitalism. You have the freedom to trade and do with your property as you wish. And then aesthetics um, is what inspires man to be his greatest. So with that, I'm going to conclude this video, but I hope that's the foundation of objectivism that I can refer back to in other videos. Uh, and I probably will often, I will be discussing these terms and I may break down some of these more in depth and I will definitely be going into capitalism and egoism in depth because those are my passion. So I will be referencing this in those two ways a lot. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy. Hope you learned something and hope you get to use it to benefit your life.